Welcome to Off Grid Path. This is a 12 part series on how we converted a rundown static caravan into our dream cabin here in the UK. I want to deep dive into how we went from this dilapidated static caravan into our cozy cabin home with no experience whatsoever. For those of you who are wanting to do something similar, I'll be taking you through all of the things that worked really well and also the countless mistakes and things that definitely didn't work throughout the whole process. If you want to check out this series and more videos like this, then just head over to my YouTube channel, Off Grid Path, and subscribe for more updates. Welcome to part one of a 12 part series, and this is the beginning. So we had the opportunity to move into a very rundown, dilapidated, static caravan that was sighted on a bit of land. This caravan was in such a bad state and we had zero experience in terms of any type of renovation or DIY experience in, in the past. So it, for us, it was, a, it was a huge undertaking because like I said, there's no experience there, don't know what we're doing, down to the fact that we didn't even have any tools and really didn't know where to start. We didn't really have an idea about how the static was going to turn out. We knew we wanted to have this kind of log cabin feel to it, so we knew that was going to be a lot of wood involved, especially in the interior, to give it that kind of log cabin feel. But in terms of the, the sort of intricate detail in terms of the layout and how things were going to look, we had no idea whatsoever. So it was very much a learn as we went, make mistakes as we went, and figuring it out as as we went. So the first thing we did was one look at the windows and it's probably about 20 windows in this in this uh, caravan and about 15 of those were smashed, you know, I don't know, kids have probably thrown stones and things at them because it's been empty for such a long time. So just went round with a bit of WD-40 and just checked that they all functioned you know and, and opened and closed just the basics and at that point we just decided just to clear stuff out there was so much kind of crap in in the cabin you know beds and and rubbish and things like that so we just wanted this blank canvas to clear everything out and we did definitely know that um we wanted to have a kitchen and lounge kind of open plan feel we didn't know exactly how that was going to look but we knew that the kitchen and lounge was going to be open plan so we started tearing down walls and i'll get onto that in a second because it wasn't the best idea but we also knew that we wanted the cabin to be as off-grid as possible we knew we couldn't afford to make it off-grid completely with solar panels and things like that but we knew at some point in the future we wanted it to be off-grid so in terms of heating we knew that we were going to have a log burner and that was going to be our sole heating in the cabin. There was going to, wasn't going to be anything else um, in terms of heating. It was just everything was going to be heated by the log burner um, burning wood, essentially. So uh, that made life quite easy because there was a boiler in the caravan that was obviously broken because it had been sitting there not used for, for so long and, and radiators throughout. So it made life very easy to just rip everything out without worrying about the radiators and their condition or pipe work and things like that we could just rip everything out we also knew that we were going to completely rewire the cabin with electrics and stuff because we did at one stage think oh you know i wonder if the electrics are good enough you know to kind of reconnect or maybe to get an electrician in to do some of the work and maybe reconnect whatever but because we were going to completely gut the entire thing you know the, the the cabin had had been lying dormant with no one using it for so long that rats would have been in here and mice and things chewing cables and things so we wanted to just start from scratch in terms of the electrics and heating and plumbing and things like that so that made life very easy because we could just rip everything out without worrying about keeping anything intact which was actually quite a nice position to be in it also meant that we weren't bound to you know where the boiler is sited that has to stay like that or you know without changing everything completely same with the electrics where lighting is and things like that you know we weren't bound to those kind of 
um, set parameters and have to, having to sort of keep in with, with electrical cables and things like that. We could just start from scratch. We went in pretty gung-ho and was, were, were quite excited about the, the prospects of doing this up, so very enthusiastic to begin with and just started tearing down walls, especially in the, the kind of kitchen lounge area because we knew we want that was going to be open plan anyway um so just started tearing down walls and ripping cupboards out and things like that and one thing i would say if you are starting or thinking about renovating a static caravan or something similar caravans are built very specifically and they are built with weight in mind because obviously any mobile home or static caravan needs to be moved so everything has to be built with weight in mind to make it as light as possible so with that in mind, we, you know, we noticed when we were tearing off kind of bits of uh, hardboard off, off the walls, which are super thin kind of bits of hardwood, and you look at the stud work behind, and essentially it's just matchsticks. It's, it's, it's the, the structural integrity of a caravan is minimal, and it needs to be minimal so it can be moved. So they make it as light and just about strong enough to do its job. So be very careful, and we are very naive at this this first instance to when when you tear down walls because everything in the caravan is structural essentially, and that's how you have to kind of think of it. Any wall or any partition or even the the kitchen units add to the structural integrity of the caravan because it's so flimsy. Now there was a a, a wall, in fact, this wall here, which you can't quite see. I'll put some pictures up. I didn't quite get the best pictures to show it, but it was completely caved in. And I think if we didn't kind of intervene with the cabin and it was left kind of untouched for another winter, that would have just completely caved in because on a windy day, you could see those walls moving and, and not just the one that was that was caved in, but also on the other side that looked OK. There was a lot of movement and flex when the wind touched it. So the point we realised that it was it was dangerous is when a friend came round and said, you can't be tearing down walls. You know, this whole thing's just going to come down. And we were just kind of naively just tearing out walls and, and and bringing down the hardboard on off the walls which also helps to keep it structural um, it's not just an aesthetic layering that helps with the structural integrity of it and we were just making it weaker and weaker and weaker without realizing that the whole thing could just come down so at that point it was really crucial to get some acro props and acro props are essentially these uh you know obviously at the time i didn't know what an acro prop was everything we were doing was just a learning process so i managed to hire some acro props for a few days and uh, stick those up which is essentially add you know just uh, they're just there to support the structural side of uh, of, of a building when, when you're taking down a, a structural wall so that became the priority is to fix this big flexing part of the of of the cabin um so we had the acro props up and the idea was to then put our own stud work up um to kind of beef up that size of of of, of the wall and the nice thing with the acro props because this side of the wall was caved in you can crank those up and essentially lift that wall up to be able to then you know put your stud work on and kind of then bring down the acro prop so it's so it's all kind of resting on that stud work we did measure the windows because about 15 out of those 20 windows in the caravan were smashed so we wanted to get those made and, and repaired as quickly as possible because we didn't want more damp coming into the caravan it's obviously left with with windows open and the rain coming in and completely uh, making the cabin damp and and rotting wood and things like that so we wanted to change that as quickly as possible by measuring out those windows and and sending those off to um, a, a window maker to get those made and fitted specifically for the windows one of the really kind of um, uh, first eye-opening bits for me and I'm, this this is going to sound really small but just to reiterate that we didn't have any experience when we were doing this was that we needed to to repair the windows um, and put new glass in the windows and these were pvc framed windows sort of plastic um, double glazed windows and basically just youtube how to change a window and beforehand i thought it was kind of some dark science 
you know that that it was a very difficult job to do and in actual fact it's incredibly easy to change a pvc double glaze window uh, you essentially just pop off the, the plastic bits on the side take the old one out and put the new one in and it was a really lovely moment for me because i was like oh my god you know it's it's not a huge thing being able to change a window but for me it was a very massive step in actually i, I can do this i don't need to get a window guy out to to change these windows i can do this so it was very empowering that 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 moment i know it doesn't sound like a big thing but certainly if you're thinking about going into something like this with no experience whatsoever a caravan's a great place to start because whatever you do to it you're adding strength essentially so you've got the shell and you can really experiment with things um especially if if you know that it doesn't have to be moved so that was a, a really nice step where we could change the windows and now the whole thing was essentially weather tight um, at least there's no rain just lashing into the windows there might be a few leaks here and there but we changed the kind of all of the broken windows and got new windows in um, which was a, a really nice moment and it wasn't just the walls and cupboards we were ripping out we also started on the ceiling because we wanted to see what was above you know how how bad the the, the sort of roof loft uh, space looked we tore down the ceiling and to our surprise there was this lovely kind of um, pitched roof and the wood was bone dry intact and i am six foot five so for me it was fantastic knowing that right you know we we can not just have a flat roof which i thought it was going to be before we can actually take this roof down use these joists and and all of a sudden that kind of living space you've added two or three foot onto that and for me when you're living in a space and you're six foot five to have that just slight bit of air above your head just makes everything a bit less claustrophobic so it was a, it was such a lovely uh, bit of a realization to know that we've got these lovely beams which are going to really add to the aesthetic of of the kind of cabin-esque vibe we were going for uh, but again we're ripping down this stuff not knowing that we're reducing the sort of structural integrity of the building as 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 we're doing it so we were reusing a lot of timber um that was uh free on the on, on the the place where the cabin is where the static caravan is uh, that is great because it's essentially free timber you're not dealing with nice timber you're dealing with timber with screws and nails and it's a bit gnarly some of it's twisted some of it's you know a bit rotten so you really have to pick through what you're gonna what you're gonna use and then you also have to denail and de-screw everything um so it's obviously a bit harder working with older you know, wood but it's free and it saves a hell of a lot of money if you get access to free wood you've got to put that kind of labor in to denail and things and and just assess that it's okay and it's all a bit of a jigsaw because you've got a load of wood and you need to kind of think ahead and think well that's a nice bit you know do we want to use it on here or do we want to save that for maybe something down the line but a lot of this wood that we used um was in fairly good condition some of it was a bit kind of um rotting a bit but you know we, we picked the good bits out of it and we used a lot of that for our stud walling and i think the the you know they varied in size but essentially like two by three um two by twos uh two by fours there were you know a selection of that that kind of um size of wood and we used a lot of that for the stud work and especially for this wall uh, that was caving in we knew that we would have to just put a new stud wall up you know something really hefty and when i say really hefty compared to what was on there this kind of matchstick stud walling it's like coming in with concrete essentially that's the difference you know you when you add that to a caravan you know it's absolutely solid so we started building a stud wall and the first one we built was for this this caved in wall where the acro props were sort of holding it up and as soon as we got that up it was the cabin just felt solid again you know that was certainly that side felt solid now in a in a static caravan you know essentially they're all probably going to be the same width i think this is about 10 foot wide when you're putting in stud wall especially like two before you've got you know you're adding kind of four inches um that what well, you're taking away four inches from the width of your of your static 
on one side. If you put that on another side, you've just taken away eight inches, which is verging on a on a foot. So you you need to uh, obviously factor that in. You know, the more stuff you put on the walls uh, to strengthen it, the more you're you're limiting that width of the of the or the, the interior size of the static. Uh, we didn't really have a choice. We needed to make this structurally strong, um, especially where it's sited. We get a lot of, especially in the winter, our sort of prevailing winds are westerlies and sometimes sort of northwesterlies, but mainly westerlies, and it howls. You know, you, you, in the winter, you're regularly getting 40, 50 mile an hour winds hitting the caravan, you know, square on. So it needed to be strong. And, you know, we didn't really have a choice. It was just put it in you know if we lose space in the interior we lose space in the interior it's not the biggest deal the main thing for us was to make it as strong as possible uh, which is exactly what we did so at this point we're thinking that the main door to the cabin uh, was slightly at one of the ends and that was going to be the lounge area and I didn't really want to be going into the lounge I wanted the lounge to be quite cozy um, and sort of keep that as kind of one contained um, area of the, of the, of the cabin uh, so we decided to move the doors and this was quite a huge deal for me because obviously I've never taken doors out never done anything like that and basically just kind of went with it there was nothing online at this point to say this is how you remove a door from a cabin uh, from a from a caravan uh, so there's nothing online to say this is how you move a, a, a pair of doors from a static caravan you basically just had to kind of make it up and the static that, that we've got is lined with um aluminium i think it is just a, a cheap metal sheeting and that is essentially the outside so when you take these hardboard walls off you've then got um a bit of very crap tidy insulation in between some very crap tiny stud wall kind of matchsticks and then on the other side of that it's literally just aluminium and then on the other side of that that's the outside and that's it that's all the the, the kind of caravan wall is so you've got the pvc frame of the door and we just kind of went in and prized that out because there's a bit of wood holding that in and that was essentially it we just had to kind of you know a bit of sort of gusto with a crowbar just to kind of pick everything off and there were bits of aluminium kind of bending and things like that but we just pretty much ripped it out it wasn't the prettiest job but we knew that once that was out you know based on seeing what the wall was like of of the caravan we could just patch that up with you know a bit of stud walling and osb and then sort of waterproof that and with with some tarp you know that's, that's basically how this build was going it was very hodgepodge and and i'm sure there might be builders watching this going this is crazy these guys don't know what we're doing which is exactly right we didn't know what we were doing at all and it was very much working it out as as we went um and i can say that it, it worked absolutely fine you know the end product has worked and it's and it's worked okay it might not be the best way to do it but it you know a lot of this was very much a bodge job and working it out at the best we could at the time with the materials that we had so i wanted to move that door by the kitchen so that the the where the kitchen is going to be was where you come into the cabin and i thought that was probably that's a central bit you know it's a good way to come into the kitchen keeping the lounge kind of nice and cozy and i thought you know the kitchen was going to be a place where you might be cooking and you might be you know wanting to take stuff outside so probably the best place to, to have the double doors. Uh, it's worth pointing out that there's, there is actually a main front door that I've never used, weirdly, just because I need to build some stairs out there, but it's not your, it's not the natural way you'd want to come into the cabin. So these double doors are essentially the, the back door of the, of, of the cabin, which we, which we use as the main doors in and out. So to put the new doors on, they went into a place where there was a window, so I had to take that window out. But instead of taking the window out, I essentially just took the wall out and cut the aluminium where I wanted it to go. Because in my mind, I was going to cut the aluminium kind of shape out of the wall, and then I was going to build stud work to support those double doors coming in. And that's exact, exactly what we did. So that's it for part one, the beginning. Join us for part two, where we refurbish a log burner that was free and given to us. 
and in desperate need of some TLC. We'll also be doing a lot more to the cabin, tearing down the internal walls and starting to put up stub work and really getting to grips with how the layout's gonna turn out. Lots of problems again, and it's just working through those as we go. So I'll give you all of the mistakes that we made and the things that works. Uh, if you do feel like subscribing, that would be greatly appreciated. And if you have any questions at all, please leave them in the comment section below. Cheers.